This is Sports 225 with Lee Feinswog. Sports 225 with Lee Feinswog is Baton Rouge's longest running and best television show. Who would have believed that? Sports 225 is brought to you by Breck. Remember, it all starts at Breck. Now, your host, Lee finds one. And so it is Sports 225. Later on in the show, Eddie Bonine, the executive director of the LHSAA, will join me. There's a lot of things to talk about with Eddie. And then Glenn Gilbo, the inimitable Glenn Gilbo, I call him, from the Gannett News Service. We'll talk some LSU, SEC, and the like. But first, earlier this week, Boots Garland died, and he was one of the great guys in the history of Baton Rouge sports, and especially LSU. He was a speed coach, a track coach. He was just a guy who we all knew and just loved, and he was really, really funny. I mean, anybody who knew Boots would tell you, when you got together with him, you just laughed. Well, seven years ago, he came on the old Sports Monday, and I will tell you, I was meticulous in saving all those shows and know where to find these old interviews. And I was able to go right to these segments that I've got coming up with Boots Garland. And you'll, you'll enjoy seeing him and you'll think fondly of Boots when you do. The first one is, is him trying to get Burt Jones faster. And then somehow we transition to him talking about Charles McClendon, Charlie Mack. Run faster in the 40, I wanna run the 100 faster. And, and, and you don't do that in sports. No. Well, the first time, I, I think we talked about this a few days ago, the, first guy that came out, it was in the spring of, of uh, 72, and I was assisting uh, Joe May in track at LSU at the time. Charlie Walker was on the staff, the track staff, and uh, this tall, gangly kid came out there, and he said, you know, in those days in the off-season football program, they didn't, do, they didn't do much. But he came out, and he said, Coach, I need to get faster. And I, mean, I, I, need to, I need to get quicker and faster. I said, no kidding, Dick Tracy. I've <laughs> seen you stumble around out there for three years. Well, that was, and he said, I, I, I want to get my 100 down. I said, well, the hunter doesn't have anything to do with playing quarterback, and, I, and it was Burt Jones, right? And uh, who later became a pretty good player. Well, he was then. I, right, mean, right. I mean, what, what am I saying? But uh, we did some. I got to thinking. I said, why don't we work? Uh, not that I was necessarily the first guy I'd ever thought of this, but uh, I said, why don't we work with athletes on running faster? And, you know, and uh, so we did about seven weeks. We did general things. And in fact, Coach McClendon still owes me two steak dinners because he didn't think that Burt was going to run right at 10 flat 100, which I let do just for drill. I didn't care if he ran at 10 flat. But they did, he did some things pretty well in the spring, and then the next fall did some pretty, things pretty well, and that's how I got involved in pro ball and all that stuff. Now the speed stuff came out. You, so, you, you're going to have a hard time collecting on the... Uh... Charlie McClendon stakes. You tell me the, about it. The late Charles McClendon <laughs> well, no, was. Not. He might have been the second biggest character has ever been on this show. But he was he was something else, wasn't he? Who, Coach Mack? Yeah. I tell you one great great line on Coach Mack was, uh, and I love the guy. You know, and I I was I was uh, actually the uh, coach. What Coach Diesel called his head knocker in a dorm in '58. I was a proctor, and I didn't knock any heads. But uh, but Mack was an assistant, and of course I got to know him then. But Mac, well, every now and then, the, word, the right word wouldn't come out. I, I still, one of his great lines that later on was that the sports writer would quiz him on guys getting hurt. And he said, well, I can't get all them guys. Well, who do they think I am? Orville Roberts? I just want to say, Mac, it's <laughs> Orville Roberts, but that's okay. Orville great Roberts. guy, though. Great. So when Boots Carlin was on the show, yeah, he was on for an hour, and we had so many laughs. But one of the things we talked about was a time when my son, Kirk, was at the LSU baseball camp, and Boots, who was the LSU baseball team's speed coach, was part of that camp. And, uh, well, here's the story. What's up? Ah, oh, well, you know, um, a long time ago, when my son Kirk, who's now 24, he'll be 24 next month, he was at the Skip Bertman baseball camp. <laughs> it had to be almost 20 years ago. No, it wasn't that long ago. He wouldn't have been four years old. How long ago was it? I don't know. The kid was like nine or ten years old. So, uh it was the last day and the parents come, you know, and you're in Alex Box Stadium and there's hundreds of kids running around on the field and there's a guest speaker and it's this guy, Boots Garland. I had never really paid much attention to him before and uh, he pulls this kid out of the stands. He goes, son, come here. And it's my son. And, he, and, and it's like, oh, God, you know, the kid's going to screw this up. And he says, how do you generate your speed? And the kid says right away, with your hands. And, I was, and, and you were like, and he got the answer right. And I said, that's my boy, you that's know. Right. That's but that right. is, that's the single biggest key, isn't it? 
I think so, yeah. That's just, of course, you can, you know, people are working on the speed factor. It's, it's come in, and there's a lot of guys doing speed work now, and, you know, and it's basically, you know, it's speed work, like you said before, I think functional speed is just speed for athletics, not, not necessarily track. See, I, I coached track for a thousand years. I get a national championship ring. It's for baseball. <laughs> so what does that prove? What a horrendous track coach I was. You know. So I want you to think about this. 26 groomsmen. Yep, that's how many people um, Boots Garland had on his side in his wedding. So we're doing the show, this one from 2009. And back then we used to take phone calls because it was a live show. And all of a sudden they show me off camera, Boots' wife is on the phone. Well, he doesn't know it, but I do. And you know, here's how it unfolded. Line one, you've been holding. Uh, welcome to Sports Monday. Hello. Hello. Um, I would like to tell Boots that we had 26 groomsmen <laughs> in our wedding. I'm sorry, baby. That his wife's name is Joanne Schoonmaker. That's, that's what I said. I said Joanne. Schoonmaker. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And um, you're not sitting on your hands like I told you to. Oh, I'm, I'm using my hands too <laughs> I, much. Huh? But, I, but that's part of it. I want him to use his hands. But can I ask you, um, Ms. Garland, how many uh, bridesmaids were there for that wedding? Well, I didn't know 26 people, so I just had 12. Oh, 12 not a small number, you know. <laughs> but it was a wonderful wedding, and he's a wonderful husband. Oh, <laughs> hey, Thank babe. you. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know why these guys I think, are laughing. I think, that's, I think that's the first time we've had that. Really? Yeah, you know, I, I you know, it's... Tell you what, babe, at August the 12th, it'll be 28 years. You got married on August 12th? Because that is the most important day of the year, you know. August the 12th? Yeah, it's my birthday. Holy mackerel. I'm Man, Boots Garland it. married on my birthday. <laughs> Send your <laughs> presents to P.O. Box. <laughs> Wonders never cease. Man, that unbelievable. Boots Garland, great guy. And like I said, anybody who knew him will smile when thinking about him because when you were with Boots, you heard stories, you laughed, and it was fun. And, you know, sorry to see him go.